Thomas, we're back, my friend. Rising star in a national edition. <laughs> well, I'll tell you who's not a rising star so far today. That'd be me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it's still early, Bats. Mm-hmm. Yes, rising star. Tony, how are you? I'm good, good. I feel like I'm in Disneyland for adults and traders. So oh, you th- are in. This is Disneyland. This Absolutely. is. So I'm so excited. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. Because ever since I've known you, you haven't come to Chicago, I don't think. Yeah, I came here about five years ago, and then he just didn't September tell you, 11. He just didn't tell you. We met up, and we talked. And yeah, I've seen that many someday, times. Right. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I, I thought we had something. <laughs> I, I was um, cheating on you. Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. Hey, um, so you're here with your family. You're having a good time. I'm having the best time. I love Chicago. It's Beautiful. the best city. A um, little colder. It's a little bit colder, yeah. A little bit colder than Mexico City. It, yeah, quite a bit colder, but uh, <laughs> but we, we go skiing a lot, so we're used to the cold, so it's fun. Awesome. All right, so let's get down and let's get kind of just down and dirty because everybody knows, yes. you know, kind of why you're here and, mm-hmm. and um, what we're going to chat about. So we, we created this segment because a lot of people um, come from very similar uh, training, let's call it training or backgrounds or yes. just get involved in different ways. Was, was Karen inspirational? Karen was so inspirational, you have no idea. Because uh, when I started uh, trading uh, many years ago, uh, I, d- I really didn't know it was trading. You know, it was just investing to me. And when I saw Karen and what she did and the results she got, it just blows my mind. So, so when did you start? Like, like when did you get interested? I know you run. You're you're an entrepreneur. You're a successful business person. You have a. You, you let's be very fair up front. You have. Um, you trade with a significant amount of capital, which yes. is which is something that we've seen. Again, it's not linear, as you know, but but you have a. Um, you know, your your trading portfolio margin. Yes. Yes. And okay. I I started uh, twelve companies in my in my life and. Uh, I sold one, three went bankrupt, and seven are going good. And uh, <laughs> it's I a com- high probability of success. It is, it okay. is. And I got lucky uh, being born where I was born with my family, and uh, I was raised like you in the uh, in the Mexican Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> I was not raised in Connecticut, according to you know. You see, you said that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I see also my trading as another company that I have to treat as uh, with respect and time and, and everything. And who the guy who got me started was my dad at 15. Uh, he said, I don't know what to get you for a present, so I'm going to give you 100 shares of any company that you want. So he got me into... I would have picked the highest price one. See, that's the difference between me and my family. I would say, Google! <laughs> well, my dad said, grab the newspaper, just hit something with your finger, and that's sure. it. But but we we talked about this yesterday. We yes. talked about it as um, uh, if you want to talk about this as a business, just like any other business you run, yes. you have to create an environment of sustainability. It, yes, you, you have to be. If you're going to treat this as a business, which we do, yes. we treat trading very much as a business. You you have to produce positive results, reasonable expectations, free cash flow, and be able to manage those expectations and manage them successfully over a period of time, which was that sustainability piece. Definitely. And uh, the other thing that I love about trading as a business, it's that it's very scalable. For example, I, I run a company that owns retail shops. And for me to scale that business, it's a pain in the butt. Can you imagine looking for a location or, sure. or opening a new factory or something? But if I want to scale my I'm not saying it's right to do it or not, but I'm saying if you want to scale trading, you just wire some money in and you scaled. Yeah, we do the segment every so, week on scaling. So, so we're very clear of that. Yeah. yeah so that's a, something so, I love about scaling. So let's go back. Yes. For, let's just go back a little bit. And mm-hmm. when did you first, I'm not talking about first start investing when your dad gave you the 100 shares. Yes. When did you first start to get more active in the markets just yes. as, a, as a self-directed investor? Do it yourself. Yes. Uh, it was about seven years ago or eight years ago. I sold an uh, uh, internet company that I started, mm-hmm. and I did I did okay for myself there. And uh, and I said, and my dad says, "What are, what are you going to do now? You have uh, you have your golf business, and but what else do you want to do?" I says, "I told my dad, look, the thing that I really really love is uh, how money works, investing, etc." So I decided to plunge in and try my luck at investing. You know, I've always been very good at school. I've always had good grades. I've always done well. And I thought I could I could do this. So I started, seven years ago, I really started uh, 
trading. But how'd you how'd you get started? Did you take a class? Did you actually? You no, no, no. I just uh, I tried because I thought I was. I could do it myself. You thought you were smarter yeah, than everybody else. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Just was, like everybody else. That's fine. right. That's you right. thought you were smarter. So yeah. I don't need. I don't need a class. Of course you like, don't. Okay. <laughs> who needs I'm a, a class? Successful entrepreneur. Are you crazy? <laughs> you know, right. I don't need this. So, so I started trading and I lost uh, a lot of money. Okay. A lot of money. A lot of money. And that's when uh, my dad, who who I don't have right now with me, but uh, the greatest guy in the world, and he told me, "You want to learn uh, trading seriously." Find out who the smartest trader in the world is. Oh so, my God, this is a setup. Oh my God. No, and then no, you're no. in a Starbucks and you rub no, shoulders no, no. with Tom Sosnoff. Please, God, I'm going to throw up in the back of my hey, mouth hey, right hey. now. You know what, Tony? We used to tell traders, and I told this story all the time, when they first go to the floor, because we didn't know how to train anybody, we said, go do whatever this person does because he's the best trader now. That's yeah. The, and that is the truth. And yeah. so my dad's lawyers are in Chicago because he was partnered with some very nice people here in Chicago for many years. And my dad asked them, do you know? who the best trader is in Chicago. Oh, and, uh, Tony Batista, don't oh, say Tony no. Batista. No, no, no. And they couldn't find anybody, but the, the <laughs> lawyer said, the lawyer said, well, there's this guy, Tom Sosnoff. Oh, God, uh, so don't I, go this way. <laughs> so I Googled Tom Sosnoff. I said, oh, my God, and he said, the he creator. Said, wait, but then you I said, said <laughs> again, hey, if he can do it, I don't have to go to any more classes. No. So I don't he, have to talk but, to anybody. But, but keep, so, you start, so you start trading. You, you, yes. You got involved. Technology was a big piece to it. Yes. Obviously, learning the technology yes. platform, and then, learning the strategies, and then I tried to take any any class that you taught because I was told that no, is this the truth that you were the best person for me to learn from? Oh, forget that. Okay, so no. so, uh, so so let's fast forward. Yes, ahead. you so, can't change history here. Stop and fast forward. <laughs> yes. Now you're seven years. This is seven years ago. At yes. what point do you finally start to turn the corner? Uh, I would say three and a half years ago. Three and a half years ago. Three and a half years ago, I stopped losing money. That's for me. You so you know. start seven years ago. The yeah. first three and a half years were tough. Yeah, I lost a lot of money. Okay. Yeah. And then three and a half years ago, you start to turn it around. I did. At what point when you started to turn it around did you recognize that, hey, not only is this, not only did I turn it around, but I can do this and I can sustain this? Uh, I never thought I could sustain this until maybe uh, a year and a half ago because I think I got lucky. Um, like golfers, I play golf, mm-hmm. like you play golf, we make many mistakes. And uh, for me, uh, this game was very mind-boggling because it's a zero-sum game. And the key finally hit me that it was the key to this is managing my winners. And uh, I didn't I didn't understand managing your winners. You guys talk about managing your winners all the time. And... It's hard to explain how to manage your winners. It is. But it's a, it's experience. It's uh, For me, for example, if I'm really, really down on a trade and I get back to even, I'm a chicken. I'm, I'm gone. That's fine. That's so fine. That's, you know what, so, you, know what, that's you said something that's, that kind of hit me mm-hmm. as like maybe not the holy grail, but some, when you first started making money, you yes. said, I think I just got lucky. I think we all say that as traders, like when we <laughs> first start trading and we start making money, we say, I just got lucky. But you're not getting lucky. You're getting better. No, no, I, I did get lucky <laughs> no! because, because I didn't know anything. Uh, I did get lucky. So, so I'm fast forward. Yes. I'm, I'm moving a time ahead now. Mm-hmm. We're, at, we're in the fall of 2011. Yes. Because this is a year and a half ago. It's when you st- first started to get consistent. Yes. And so let's let's talk about then. End of 2011, you start feeling like you're going to be successful. Yes. Going into 2012, mm-hmm. you're 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 bullish on yourself. I am very bullish. Yes. First quarter 2012, it was a very tough quarter, just yeah. like this one. I started uh, bogey, 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 bogey. Yeah, <laughs> so, or maybe bogey, double bogey. <laughs> Who knows? Okay. So so bogey, 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 which makes total sense. Yes. January, February, yeah. March. Because I remember you calling into the show. I was show. crying. I was crying. You were crying. Yeah. And I got the crying <laughs> email. I got the crying call. <laughs> and there's no crying baseball. No, no, but and, I cry. Okay. And then and then all of a sudden, let's talk about 2012. How much did you trade in 2012? I trade like a, like a crazy person. I think I traded like 7,000 trades. 7,000 trades? Yes. In 2012? Yes. Okay. Not that, contracts, just trades. No, no. That's, yeah. mm-hmm. that's, so 7,000 trades, just to put that into perspective, 250 days, you do a little traveling. <coughs> you're talking on average, let's call it about 40 trades a day. Yeah, but I never trade when I'm traveling, so don't tell my wife. She's right. listening, so <laughs> never. So let's just yes. say 40 trades a day on average. Yes. Probably. Uh, my my low light days are 
10 to 15, and my heavy days are 35, 40, 50. Okay, perfect. Yeah, but well, 7,000 trades, that's a legit number. That's a, yeah. that's a big number. It is. And um, <clears throat> you kept your size reasonably reasonably small, I assume, throughout the course of the year, because you keep your size. Mm, yeah, the, the things that I, I make a lot of mistakes uh, as a trader. I'm very stubborn as a trader. I add to my losers which I know I shouldn't do. But I think the key thing that I was successful last year is like when you go on a diet, I didn't cheat. I didn't buy any volatility. I didn't buy any calls. I didn't buy any puts. I said to myself, give yourself one year where you're really honest with yourself. And I did that and it turned out beautiful. So 7,000 trades, pure honesty. Yes. How'd, the, how'd the year turn out return-wise? Uh, on my trading account... Yeah, I got, uh, I think I sent you the sheet, 42%. 42%. Yes. Which, again, it's, it's a legitimate a, number. It's a big number on, yes. a, on a big account. Yes. And um, and obviously, if you're making 7,000, you can just, you can you can figure out the stuff in your head. Mm -hmm. That's in a year when, when risk-free returns, again, I mean, Zero. what was the stock market up last year? 6%? Right. What was the S and P six or seven percent? I don't remember. It wasn't much. No, it was. I think more than that. But was it more? Yeah, was it ten. So. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I don't even. I, um, mm -hmm. The fascinating thing, Tony, is that that's a legit business. It is. It is, and it's wonderful. But you really have to learn the intricacies of the business, and you have to really gain experience by trading a lot. So what you guys say about trade often is very important. And for example, I never used to use the VIX um, a lot. I use VIX now as uh, aggressiveness indicator. And what I, so when it's really low, I know I have to be aggressive with my direction. I'm also with my size, but I shouldn't do I'm not gonna say that. But and when it's when VIX is really high, you have to be very aggressive with the amount of capital you commit because those are opportunities that uh, the market is giving you so you can have a higher probability of success. The S P was up around nine percent last no, okay, nine percent. Mm -hmm. So so here's some of the things I found mm -hmm. interesting about Tony. Number one, when you say you committed a lot, you, you not only committed a lot of time to trading, but you also committed a lot of time to, to thinking. You, yes. have, you wrote two books last year about trading. Yeah, I'm a crazy person. And uh, to tell you the truth, uh, when you started tasting, you guys were saying some such valuable stuff. And I said, I can't let these things go to waste. So I took everything I have learned and what you guys said, and I put them together because my goal is to teach uh, my kids to trade. So that's the reason why I wrote all all that valuable information in a in a piece of paper. And book three is piece of paper. I was going to say it's three volumes, a piece <laughs> of paper. And book three is already I have it in beta. Oh my god! So it's it's crazy. I'm a crazy person. But but the the coolest thing about that is we just had Robin on to do the other yes. right, and and she had. She's been working with some of her friends, mm -hmm. and they've actually started to write books, not books that they intend to publish, that kind of thing. But it's all about the fascination, just just the repetitive, you know, mm -hmm. just all that repetition. I mean, y your, your knowledge base right now, is, it's, there's no difference between you and me and Tony and anybody else. There really isn't. We have more experience. That's it. You have more experience, and you have seen more stuff than I have seen. But I really, I don't want to say I'm, I, I will never be in you guys' level, but I think I'm, mechanically wise, I think I'm, I'm pretty confident. It's, it's a f fascinating business, but why do you think the world's so far behind? And when I say the world, I don't mean like other markets and everything. I just mean the consumer. The number I'll, of people. I'll tell you. I'll you have consumer businesses. Yes, you, yes. You, you recognize I, how far behind this industry is. Tom, I'll tell to you because it's, it's very easy once you know what you're doing. But if you don't know what you're doing, you lose a lot of money. So you 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 give up very fast. You know, I didn't give up fast because I'm a very stubborn person, unfortunately. And I had some money to lose. So it it is very easy, but you really have to do it right. So that's the hard part. Knowing the mechanics, knowing how to manage your winners, knowing how to use volatility, knowing knowing different market setups, you know. It's really just recognizing it, right? I mean, it's not even like knowing it. If volatility is high, most people are running away from the market. You're kind of like us, looking to embrace exactly. the market there, exactly. just looking for the opportunity. Exactly. So see opportunity as opposed to seeing fear. I mean, Definitely. that's really what it comes the, down the to. The number one thing that hurts people is fear, I think, when they that prevents them from becoming rich is fear.
But you fear, remember the cons- it, you think it's fear of we call that you know fear of success. No, no, or, no. Or you think it's fear of it's fear of losing what their hard earned money. I think sure it's the fear of the unknown. I mean, most people get a paycheck every week. Yeah, you know, and they're, they're they know how to budget themselves. But people out. aren't by by definition. Okay, just the way people gamble, the way they go to Vegas, mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. way they go to places. People are not scared of there, there's. There, I think there's one, it's a fear of success. Yes. And I think, which is on a much more broad basis mm-hmm. because people are, you know, it's just. We need Slimmy in here to figure out what that is. It's also fear <laughs> of, it's fear of the resources. Like you've committed, you committed, Robin committed, Karen committed a ridiculous amount of your life. I committed, Tom, it's crazy. It's, I have committed more than, I'm 40,000 hours to this. I, I was calculating the other day. 40,000 hours. Yes. It's a, it's a crazy amount. And in seven years, so you can do the math, how how crazy I am. And, and what's your <laughs> handicap? Has it suffered a little bit? It, but I used to be really good. Now I'm like a 12, 14. I'm terrible. Still really good. I'm uh, still okay, <laughs> but I used to be a good golfer. Now I, I suck. So, so so it's it's really interesting because when Karen was on the first time, Tony, and I know you watched this multiple times. Yes. She took. She said it took her seven years or six years from 2001 yeah. to 2007, 2008 before she turned. Yeah. When Robin was here, I, I met her at least six or seven years ago, mm-hmm. you know, when she first started and it was something very similar. There was a five-year path. For you, it's three and a half. Then I think we're going to close this gap yeah. and we're going to get it down to where it should it's be. It's a great goal. It is, but it's th- that's what content is. Right. Yeah. We're accelerating that path. There's no, you can't change the information. No, 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 no. The information is information. You, you, right. You're just accelerating the path. Yes. To get definitely. There. Definitely. I think you could do it in a couple of years. I think. Less. I mean, less. I don't want to scare the children here. No, no, no. But I mean, to do it really, really solidly. I think you could do it really good in three months. You can get a, a, a. You can be good in three months. So, so let's talk about the yeah. objectives for 2000 and. Well, my objective for 2013 is uh, in one of the classes you were teaching um, when I when I started, you said that we should be able to double our money when trading. Maybe you don't remember many years ago. Okay, but for me, that's not my goal. It's very yeah. hard. I, I don't really say that now. Like, I mean, yeah, that I may know. have been a longer term. Yeah, objective. longer term right. objective. But now my goal is to at least be above 25 percent consistently for the rest of my life. I would be happy. On, on a big on a big number, yeah, and uh, so if if I if hit 40, 50, 60, 70, I know I'm capable of hitting those numbers, but I have to really be really good. But I'm I'm not worried of of losing money. So your expectations, uh, you have now reasonable expectations, but you think exactly like we think. I don't start 2013 and for one second think I'm going to lose a penny. No, never. Right. Even though I think I shot a 40 on the front nine, then January, February, March this year. Bogey, bogey, bogey. (laughs) No, no, I think bogey, triple, double. (laughs) But uh, I know I'm going to have a really good year this year, so I'm not worried about it. You know, the, to a certain extent, like you talk about professional golfers, if they do double bogey a hole, I, I know it bothers them. Of course it does. But they, they just, they know they can Because they make, know it's out there. They know it's out there, meaning it's going to happen, yeah. but they don't expect no, it to happen. But they know they can go birdie, birdie. Of yes. course, to make up for it. The, the average hacker, okay, if they double or triple bogey the first hole, the round's over. That's right. right. Do you know what Tiger Woods shot uh, the front nine when he won his first Masters? Uh, probably a 40. Is what 40. Yeah. Yeah, and he won the Masters for like right. 500 million shots. Right. Yeah. So, so, but that's a perfect example because they know they can do it. That's right. The average right. investor, when they lose right up front, mm-hmm. they cannot turn it around. That's what right. do you think was the number in 2012? Going back and thinking about different strategies and thinking about the way you applied all this stuff yes. in 2012, how, what what got you? You know, what pushed you over the line? Actually, let's go back to the third quarter, uh, fourth quarter of 2011. What mm-hmm. was the turning point? But either like strategically for you? I was taking uh, more undefined risk. I think that changed a lot of my trading. I was a very uh, coward trader. I I never thought about, I I always wanted to do defined risk strategies. But when I opened my mind up and gave myself a chance to more uh, naked strategies, I think that that's what really was the game changer for me. 
So it was just, it, you really, you know, you, you're using more capital. Yes. I don't really think, well, none of us think you were actually taking more risk. No, 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 no. Right. On you're the contrary. You're improving your... On the contrary, right. I was, I was, I thought I was taking more risk. I'm taking less risk. Right. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm having a, not less risk, but I'm having a higher probability of success. That's right. So, so, I mean, that's the incredible The whole part. thing is about, what people don't understand about this business, and it's the hardest thing to get across, Tony, is when is the relationship between risk and probability of success. Yes. I, I, when I'm doing live classes now all the time, I say to people, "Would you, if somebody sat down and said, you have a 75% chance of success, okay, 75% chance yeah. of making 100% on your money, would you do that for unlimited risk? And they go, of course. Of course. But we don't think about that no. when we're actually investing. We think no. about how do we define our risk and how do we manage our risk, and we all lose. You know, people have very... Uh, very crazy ways of thinking about money. And uh, for example, you guys are no strangers to restaurants, right? <laughs> no. Uh, I've been to one or two. Okay. <laughs> okay. So when you go in a restaurant, you grab a menu. Yeah. You're actually deciding if you're going to be a little fatter or a little thinner the next day. Do you know that? Where are you going with this? Okay. <laughs> Same thing is with money. Every time a dollar bill enters your life, we have a chance to decide with that dollar bill, if we're going to be a little richer or a little poorer, poorer the next day. And let me explain a little bit. You can do four things with money. And I know that. Don't, don't. Go it's on. only four things, okay? Now your wife's here. I'm going to be nice. <laughs> yeah. So first thing you can do with money is spend it. Number two thing you can do with money is borrow against it. Use it as collateral. Third thing you can do with money is save it. And fourth thing you can do with money is invest it. Savings, now people have some crazy th uh, ways of thinking of savings. For example, I hate it when people say, I'm saving uh, to buy a new car. I'm saving to go on a trip. That's not saving. That's postponing an expense. Mm -hmm. The only key, the only way to really save is to save to invest. If you ask one of my kids or my wife, what are they saving for? They're saving. So Eduardo, my son, he's saving to, so he can sell an extra apple put every month. Mm -hmm. My daughters are saving because they want to open a ballet school. They want to invest. Sure. And then we have investing. What do people do? They work hard, they save money, and then what do they do? They give it to a, a third person to, to invest for them, right? And 95% of these people are, or let's say 99 are good people, but 95% of the people, their goal is that, you, of course, you do well, but that's not their main job. Their main job is asset gathering, Right. Sure. It, so the whole industry is conflicted yes. by the concept of asset exactly. Gathering. It's all the whole world is just yes. an asset gatherer. Yes. Yes. And that brought me when seven years ago, Tom, you told me something that has haunted me. Now I'm kidding. For for many years, you said I asked you the first time I met you, what do I need to be successful in trading? And you told me you need money and you need a brain. Now you call it capital and ordering a pizza. I think. <laughs> okay. And there's two accelerators for money. The first accelerator is the r savings rate that a person has. If you save, because I really analyzed this a long time, and I'm teaching my kids this. If you save less than 10% of your money, it's very hard to become rich in the future. So I've analyzed you have to save between 10 and 20% of your money in order to be able to invest it. And people who save more than 25%, you know what we call those bad? No, Cheapskates. <laughs> so we, we hate people that save a lot. So you, you have to enjoy life. And the other accelerator is the rate of return of your investments. And that's what you're helping me and thousands of other people get this other money accelerator. Because the savings, we can, we can do ourselves. But the accelerator of rate of return is what, what you guys are doing is so incredible. I mean, and for me, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to learn from you guys. Beautiful. You guys are the Tiger Woods and Jack Nicklaus of, right. of trading. <laughs> yeah, and right, I'm not saying this. Right. I'm just not saying this. I'm really, I really believe that the the combination of these two factors is really what what uh, is going to make us successful. Tom put on his fancy shirt for you today. You Thank kidding you. me? You, you way. influenced him. Tony, we got to run because we're yes, on to our next I know. segment. But this was so good. I think it's so important for people to. You, you can articulate this business in such. A, it's like feels like to me. Feels like you've been. Doing, yeah. Feels like you've been doing it for forever. And it also feels like uh, your depth of your, your real depth of understanding between um, asset gathering, conflicts, and trading and yes. returns. It's if if we even at a very basic level we can spread that message. Change the whole world. Yeah, and just just for 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 goodbye, my parents always told me that in life, when you do something, you have to leave a mark, not a scar. And for us investors, we have a lot of scars, and you guys are leaving such a positive 
mark on myself and thousands of other people on the other side of Thank the you. camera that you have no idea what a positive mark you're doing and no scars here. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And we love you guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Tony. Appreciate it. It's supposed, good to job. Be, it's supposed to be our show. We're supposed to thank you. That's a good job out of you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with our bootstrap at portapure.com. You listen to Get Tasted on the